Hello and welcome to yet another important episode of the program Nigeria Now on Equal Television International where we will be looking at various stories ranging from that in Nigeria and then going to Africa. Quite a lot has been happening for the past few days and then today is another new moon so we'll be looking at what we have to talk about today. And that I like Shadashom. Remember you can join us live on Facebook and on YouTube. Drop your comment, your contribution on any of the story that is of interest to you. And I'll be doing this alongside Rachel Tanze. Good afternoon. Afternoon, Sally. Happy New Month again. Thank you. I wish you same. <laughs> Thank you so much. So quite a lot is going on in the country presently, yes. Rachel. Looking at the federal government having quite a lot, ministers trying to see the well bringing out various things they want to do for their ministry, mm -hmm. rolling out certain agenda and how they hope to help the president because he listed, I think, about eight points and the ministers are meant to help him accomplish yeah. this agenda. And one of which is looking at the aviation ministry. So one, the federal government is actually suspending some of the projects going yes. on there and the suspension is indefinitely mm -hmm. and one of the reasons Kiamu who happened to be the minister of that ministry was the fact that the old terminal we are having is actually not functioning some of the lifts are not working well the condition there is not welcoming and quite a lot and he's um, saying that they're going to be shifting it to the new terminal even though the, the new time now, it has some one or two things that like need to be yeah. fixed. Yes. We can the fact that it cannot handle big planes and all mm -hmm. of that. And the aviation ministry is trying to see what they can do to fix it so that it can actually carry quite a lot. True. We remember when he was giving that ministry for one, quite a lot of concern coming from Nigerians. Yes. If he will be able to handle that ministry or not. But we've seen that he's already rolling out what he needs to do. And then he's giving um, the aviation to, I think, October 1st for them to leave the terminal and yes. they move to the new one. The new and one. then the new one will also be worked yeah. on. So quite a lot going on in that ministry for now. Of course, he, he also said let the private hangars move so that there will be more mm. space in the new terminal and all of that. And said that there's absolutely nothing wrong for a minister coming in to put some things in halt to assess and he said that he has to give a good assessment to the mm. government to the gov to the president and he has to audit the past contract and what has been going on of of all mm. the major reason is that he needs to make inspection before moving on with whatever is going on and then there's nothing wrong about that because in as much as one thing that I believe should drive the growth of a country or whatever it is that you're doing mm. is continuity. Regardless of who was in the pre previous office, when you step in, there should be continuity. Now, what I am looking forward is no new project, but continuation. Is it okay to halt and get a grab and hold of things? Of course, don't just jump into it, especially where he made a remark concerning the opening of Nigerian Air that looked like a sham or like a fraud because the plane we had wasn't even mm -hmm. ours in the first place and is not a brand new plane over 10 years, making statement that has been used by Ethiopian Air and all of that. It's totally understood. Mm -hmm. However, I am looking forward to the minister. He's, he just stepped into office, and of course, we have no choice than to give benefits mm -hmm. of that. But what we are expecting to see is that first, this um, suspension <coughs> of this yes. project should be for a very short period of time. Audit and assessment shouldn't take forever. Trying to fix what needs to be fixed shouldn't take a very long period of time. These private hangars, for example, are also gener revenue generation mm -hmm. um, um, method, or how would I put not it? Like generate revenue from exactly the for the airport. So this shouldn't be something that should not be taken seriously. Also, everything should function. However, one thing I know about very um, delicate um, sectors, most especially that has to do with safety and transport every time be it air road and um, yes air road c they need to be constant maintenance and if, if you read between the line it already shows that there should there is a failure from the past administration because nothing should be left to damage so badly that there has to be a pause in activity for it to go back to function 
the aviation ministry should work through work in a way that everything keeps upgrading 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 you can't wait till the lift is bad the moment it has a fault you fix it so this is already pinpointing that this was some of the things that the past administration neglected mm. because this is a running place maintenance should happen immediately not until things get dilapidated <coughs> then we find the government spending more like doing something newer than just continuation so i just hope that the current minister picks up from there and say in my own time i won't wait for things to spoil for the hangars, they shouldn't stay too long. And if you're no longer using the MMI um, old terminal and you are down to the new one, mm. let it be that these things won't take long. It's not all about saying we are pausing it, but how long do you plan on doing it? This is what I keep saying. We, we have this attitude seller of just giving the date we want to start without an estimate of when it will end. Give Nigerians time to work with. I'm stopping at the 1st of October. For instance, by the 1st of December, we should be up Maybe and running. January 2024. Exactly, said it. it shouldn't take too long. So I'm just looking forward to seeing that this, whatever adjustment he needs to make, which is very important, no doubt, shouldn't take long, that things should be up and running in a very short period of time. Well, I hope that whatever that old terminal was doing, the new terminal should be able to should, do the same. Even yes. though he raised concern that it's a smaller compared mm -hmm. with the old terminal. And he also raised concern of the issue of theft, where we see a lot of lights are missing. Yes. So I hope that we will not see a repetition of that, even though they are hoping to bring some of the lights from um, Kano Airport. Mm -hmm. But then we hope that a lot will be done because he make mention of the fact that about 60% of the revenue the Federal Airport Authority realized is coming from Lagos. So you know that quite a lot needs yes. to be done because it's one of the big airports it we is. have in the country so our fingers are crossed just like you said it's a continuation and we hope that we'll have a time when everything will be fixed now still looking at the issue of our ministers because we're looking at i think the ministry is one after the other yes. to be sure that everybody's in what is he or she is supposed to do True. we're also having the ministry of humanitarian affairs and also talking about poverty and elevation uh, yeah. actually looking at how they will be able to elevate 15 million households. Mm. Immediately I heard that number, it took my mind back to when the federal government wanted to elevate 12 million, 12 million households, households. 8,000 Naira each. Yes. And then a lot of Nigerians fought that um, mm. number, the fact that if you're talking about 12 million households, how many states are you picking? Like how many people per state? Even though this um, 15 million we're having, it's about a ratio of 5.7 people. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you begin to wonder how the ministry is hoping to pick that. But I'm happy because the ministry um, is actually looking at how they can elevate a lot of people that are poor. Even though we know more Nigerians right now, everybody seems to be poor because the, will I say, looking at our condition of living keeps going down and down every day. So for instance, if you're able to spend about maybe 10,000 Naira in two days right now, in fact, 50,000 naira is not enough for two weeks for a family mm -hmm. of maybe four, five, six. So quite a lot is going on. But then this is a step. So we're not going to say that the ministry is not doing anything whatsoever. But this is a step where she is looking at how she can work with the president, even though she's mm -hmm. waiting for an approval coming from him. So they'll be meeting on Monday. So that will determine if the president will approve that project or not. But we hope to hear positive things coming out when in the terms of looking at elevating a lot of people from poverty, from hunger, and then making sure that people have something in their hands to move with. You know, Sela, we have an average of each household in Nigeria, an average of at least five people. So if you're looking at 15 million household times multiply it by five, we are looking at 75 million people mm -hmm. being elevated from poverty. However, we know that the poverty level is not the same. And now my concern is that do we have a government that can't can do that yes but we are seeing a government that have failed to provide palliative to of it's eight thousand naira to 12 million household to the poorest of poor we are yet to see a government that have given five billion naira to state government we don't know the rationale behind that 
don't know what they use to calculate that five million will be enough for Kano or Lagos or all the states they've sent to. And we are yet to hear the state government coming out to say we've received it. We've had few states recorded that they've gotten two million. Mm. However, these were just at most two states as at last week saying we have seen this. We're still waiting for states to say, okay, this money coming out from the federal government have arrived. Now, my challenge is when you set a goal as a ministry, be realistic. Be very, very realistic with the condition of the country. Now, whether we like it or not, even before things stabilize economically in this country, it's going to take nothing less than a period of two years. And even at that, it's not even really long run. It is short run because we are still in the period of our currency devaluing almost on a daily and weekly basis. We are looking at situation where um, subsidy, petrol subsidy has made inflation and everything, the price mm -hmm. of living going high. We are seeing the standard of living going and then the number of people that are going into poverty increasing. So before you can even elevate poverty, you have to have a stable economy. And we have, now I'm not saying that they should reduce the number of people they want to plan on elevating poverty, but can the government start with the needful? Let's see that, okay, before we get there, we want to reduce your hardship. You haven't even succeeded in giving palliative and now you are giving a promise that you haven't even said how long and what are the statistics you're going to use to make sure that you are actually targeting mm -hmm. this poorest of the poor or 15 million poor household. I'm looking forward to a, a, a government that said uh, we will be out there more for us as a country, be more precise, telling us what they want to pl what they plan on doing doing it as it is and be more realistic with their goal setting because a lot of times we end up being discouraged or angry because the government can make very sweet promises, promises. and they never tend to achieve it. Mm -hmm. Put something doable out there and take tiny steps to make sure you achieve that. That is how we can grow in this country. Well, just like you said, we're looking forward to seeing a government setting up a piece and following it up. Because if there's one thing I'm used to saying is the fact that what is cheap, words are cheap. It's one thing for you to come out and tell the people, See, just yes. like you said, let's look at the five billion that have been sent. How many states have gotten it? Absolutely. Even the, the, the trucks of grains that were supposed to come. Still How many waiting. states have seen those grains? So, yeah. And already we remember the last time we spoke about that five billion, they were given till December mm -hmm. to be able them, to pay off. And, yet to receive and they have not seen it. Paying. So you begin to yeah. wonder, I'm yet to see something, I'm beginning mm -hmm. to think, or maybe it has landed and then the government of The federal government states. was the one that mentioned who they have already sent to. Mm. So I know that the federal government won't even wait for the states to do the announcement. They will do it themselves well, when so they finally Richard, make as it is right now, our fingers will just be crossed yes. to make sure that they do that, even yes. though they have promised, like the Ministry of Humanitarian and Poverty Elevation have promised that they are looking at doing this till 2030, which mm. I know, of course, the eight years for maybe that is the period of their yes. time. So we'll just keep our fingers and then we hope that they will do the need for it. Now, finally, before we round up, it will be out of place if we do not talk about the issues that are happening in yes. Africa because Nigeria is also part of what is happening. And just recently, we've seen that there is a coup again in Gabon. Yes. And then this happened on Wednesday. Everybody wake, woke, woke up from sleep and mm -hmm. then we saw that news. And just on Sunday, they had an election and then things didn't go well. And a lot of um, people have come out to talk about the issue of maybe bad governance in mm -hmm. Africa, the issue of poverty, mm -hmm. the, issue, the issue of quite a lot of things that are happening. And then we've seen that African leaders are becoming scared, so to say, they because are. we've seen Rwanda, we've seen Cameroon, we've seen other states beginning to reshuffle and beginning to retire some of its generals. I mean, we had that in Rwanda, where about 12 generals have been retired, and then over a thousand soldiers yes. have also been retired, and then we have other junior military officers have been promoted to colonels and the likes of this. But then this will bring to mind to see what really is a problem, because we're having African Union had a meeting yesterday to see what can they do to, you know, will I secure the virus that actually seems to be spreading. 
Niger is in West Africa, so it would look as if it was in West Africa, but then we're having Gabon, which is in Central Africa. So mm. it seems as if something is wrong in Africa. Yes. And then the leaders of Africa are yet to realize that something is wrong with this continent and we need to do something about it. What breaks my heart, Richard, is the fact that when you look at all these countries that are presently going through coup, you realize that these are countries that have something rich in the country. When you talk about Niger, a lot of oil there. Are you going to look at even Gabon presently? It's one of the richest economy if you're going to look at its soil and all that it has. Yes, yes. But then when you take a look at its people and then you look at what the country has, you ask what seems to be the problem. I mean, quite a number of the leaders in Central Africa are actually have been in seed for only God knows two decades, three decades. So you begin to ask questions. Over, that. Over I yes. mean, like that of the Gabon. He, maybe His by father. October, he was supposed to be in seed yes. for like... That the family, it looked like it was a family mm -hmm. seat mm -hmm. for about 56 years. And the people are not happy with what is going on. So quite a lot going through the minds of Africans as it is presently. What can we do at this point in time to put a hold to what is happening when you come to look at the issue of coup in African countries? You know, Sele, for African leaders to be scared, it means they know they're not doing something right. Sele, if you know you're doing the right thing, you have no reason whatsoever to be afraid. But if you begin to retire your generals and other military officers that are in hierarchy because you are afraid they will topple your government, then meaning at, in your subconsciousness, at the back of your mind, you know you're not doing something right. Therefore, you're afraid that because of this wrong mm -hmm. thing I'm doing, my government is going to be toppled by the military. And this is what every other African leadership that is showing fear is clearly saying that I am not doing the right thing, therefore the military might come for me. Because if you're doing the right thing, then you have no reason whatsoever to worry that your military will take over from you. But then it shows that we have leaders that are aware that things are not going right, but they rather sit on that power, watch mm -hmm. it not go right, and now are afraid that the military is going to take over. Now we know that, of course, the, the, the situations in, 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 various, in all the African countries vary. This was at the point of an election, the result wasn't as it was supposed to go, and then the military stepped in in such a manner, and all of that for Niger, it wasn't as an election, but then the military was tired of the government, poor policies, and how nothing was moving well for them as they thought it should move. Now, I am happy, and at this point, I'd like to say ECOWAS should please stay in their place and let them leave the African Union to be able to step in because this is the body that do have principles, objectives, and treaty concerning coup or unconstitutional taking over of government because they do have sanctions and law for that and it's clearly out there because they do have an African charter on election governance and leadership mm -hmm. in in African countries and number one sanctions especially when it comes to coup is a suspension and which we've clearly seen that AU did not even take one two minutes and actually exactly and the put on the suspension on 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 Gabon. Now other things will follow suit because everything is one step at a time, bit by bit, and then you go on because they are in there. And if it has to be, if there must be military intervention, the African Union is in a better position to step in and make sure that they they, they drive mm. um constitution back to its place in these various um, countries. But the thing is, we have to go to the root, Sele. That is the bottom line. We have to go to the root. If governance is the problem in Africa and in West Africa and all the regions that have been um, affected, then let something be done about governance. Because from good governance, we will be able to have a better standard of living better economy and a lot of these things won't even be a problem. Mm -hmm. If there is check and balance in a system, coup will even be difficult to take place in the first place because everybody will be placed in a position that nobody can um, mishandle power in a lot of ways. If it means for Africa to sit down against Sele 
and start thinking where are we not getting our system of government right and fix it. I think it's about time we start doing that. Rather than being scared of what the military will do in your country, it's time for taking drastic measures such as correcting what is mm. the problem mm. in these countries? Of course, you know, it because even even while I'm mentioning the likes of Rwanda, even Nigeria, we saw yes. it on the paper this morning where they said that any military leader or any military officer yes. that is actually planning to do anything should quit. Should quit, before yeah. Before you actually that. think of doing True. anything. But just like you said, one thing stands out for me, and I think that is the lesson I've gotten, is the fact that as Africans, we need to have the conversation between democracy and development. Because True. over there, we've seen that, yes, there is civil rule mm -hmm. going on, but development is not going on in all of these African countries. I'm going to look at even the likes of Niger and Gabon. You see that these countries are not being developed, mm -hmm. despite the fact that we've had leaders that have been on that yeah, exactly. for a very what have long they period been doing of time. Seven. You ask the question, what have you been doing? Why are these countries not developing? Why? Basic mm -hmm. things that are supposed to be needed are yes. not there. The people are suffering. So mm -hmm. no wonder the people decide to choose between the deep the, the devil and the deep blue sea because if you ask the military is not the way out of it not the because way of out. course you will be having just one deed and we're not here saying that the military is out of, of it course nobody not. likes the military rule nobody like cool whatsoever i always it's say that as nigeria we had our own fair share so we know what it did was and how course. it was where we had the military rule. So I think as AU have met and they have talked, I think another conversation they need to have mm. is about the fact that let us have a particular tenor for all of these countries. Are you going to be running for four years, four years, making just two tenors, mm. or are you going to be having three tenors? Let it be stated clearly because we have a number of countries that till date we still have. I was going to talk about the likes of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. The present president has been on seat for the past 23 years. I'm going to look at even Congo. We're talking about mm. 38 years. Mm. Uganda, 37 years. Yes. Equatorial Guinea, 44 years. Cameroon, 48 years. So you begin to look at all of these African mm -hmm. countries. It's a seed that sweet. It's power that beautiful that mm -hmm. you don't want to leave it to. I think this is a conversation that as Africans, mm -hmm. the leaders need to have that conversation. I think when they deal with it, just like you said, from the roots, then there'll be no need for any g coming from any mm -hmm. leader because yes. you know things are working in the pace where they should be. So we look forward to seeing more and positive conversation oh, yeah. coming up rather than just serving the medicine after that when nothing can be done True about it. Thank you so much, Richard, You're for doing welcome. this with me. And thank you to our viewers for keeping the date with us on Nigerian Now. We hope you actually were able to drop your comment. Until we come you again, to have a blessed day ahead.